Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and earlier this week, I reported some news that uh, the key members of the Godot leadership team formed a new company. The new company is called W4 Games, and the entire idea behind this new company was going to be to support Godot in ways it currently can't. So, like, for example, if you're developing for a console, uh, you need to sign an NDA. Some of the code needs to be proprietary. It doesn't really work in an open source environment. So they're going to sort of be that bridge. However, this company is also going to uh, support Godot by giving code back to it, giving it financial resources, etc., when possible. So their tweet basically said they were going to help uh, Godot find its way into enterprises to help the Godot community publish for any platform they want. And honestly, I think that is the biggest one. So if you're going to want to target, say, the PlayStation, the Switch, uh, or Microsoft's Xbox console, well, you kind of need to have this little proprietary layer that's compatible with generally closed SDKs and also to just generally make Godot better. So uh, more details of that. I'm not going to repeat that video. I already did that one. But this company forming, W4 Games, already has bared some fruit for the Godot community uh, because of this announcement. Let me just zoom on in. And this is that W4 Games has donated Direct3D 12 support to the Godot engine project. Now, there's actually nothing to say that Godot is actually going to accept this. I imagine they will, but they actually could uh, choose not to because they are separate individuals. Although, obviously, W4 Games are going to use this uh, support as part of their, you know, bringing uh, Godot to a number of different platforms. So even if it's not accepted, you need to have a Direct3D 12 rendering backend for a couple of things. Those things include um, Microsoft Windows, if you want to have the best support in that regard, support for the UWPs, the store, um, support for Windows on ARM, which eventually is going to be a thing, uh, Microsoft Game Developer Kit, and then, of course, Xbox. So if you want to have Xbox support, you're going to need to use Direct3D 12. So they needed to write a backend, so they did, and they have made that code available for uh, the Godot project generally. It's available as a pull request here. Uh, we'll go and look at the pull request in a few minutes. So Godot could choose to accept this or not. Do keep in mind, Godot still supports OpenGL and it still supports Vulkan. This is just a third rendering layer. Um, so we hope that others can take advantage of this code as well as to contribute to its improvement. The beauty of open source is that we all contribute towards the common good and we all benefit from it. So that is the donation they've made. So this is the kind of idea of what W4 Games is going to be all about. They're going to be doing things that may not have made sense to do like as an open source project, as a core contribution, but things that are needed in the commercial space. So if you want to tar target these various different platforms, this code needs to be written. And they did, and they donated it back. Uh, in terms of DirectX, 12 itself. If you've never heard of it, DirectX has been around for ages. It actually was originally a 2D only thing, uh, but it used to do, it does input audio, uh, graphics, uh, storage, uh, and of course, Direct3D, which is, Direct3D 12 is basically the equivalent of Vulkan. They both went very low level. DirectX 11 and OpenGL 4.X were more high level um, in the way they implemented things, but they also created like driver hell. So what they did with these newer versions of these rendering cores is made them a little bit lower level. So you're writing almost like assembly level code to tell your graphics card what to do uh, but this makes it so that the, the silicon can actually evolve a lot faster and the end result should also be quicker as well that's a butcher definition but just know uh, DirectX 12 and Vulkan code is a lot lower level and generally a lot harder to write than OpenGL code so it's nice of them to contribute interestingly enough there's no DirectX page there's a download for the redistributables uh, but this is as close as I came so if you want to read about the various different uh, packages and tools and such that are out there. Uh, that is what is here. There are a number of different frameworks out there as well. Um, and, and DirectX is a large and hugely encompassing thing. But for the most part, people think of it for Direct3D, which is like Vulkan, but for Microsoft platforms only. Uh, in terms of this actual uh, release, there is a ton of details here in the... Um, the pull request kind of goes through what it's all about. If you're wondering about the performance of this right now, um, it has not been able to deliver more than 75% of Vulkan's um, frame rate in some tests. Well, in other tests, it's been able to outperform Vulkan by a small margin, and they're going to iron this stuff out over time. So imagine in time we will see that Direct X or the Direct 3D support is going to be kind of on par with Vulkan support in terms of performance. And giving more options is always a nice thing. Now, one thing to keep in mind is, of course, that this is a Microsoft-specific render. So you're not going to run Direct 3D 
on uh, Linux or on Android or any of those things. Although there has been some speculation or rumors about Microsoft wanting to support Direct3D on Linux. I don't know if there's any legs behind those rumors, but that would be an interesting development. Um, so you can get some details on here. There are a couple of known issues. Multi-view rendering does not work. Only the left eye is rendered. Uh, so for pirates, that is unfortunate. Uh, and SDFGI glitches on AMD GPUs. Oh, by the way, this will also be important for um, VR. So if you want to support like Microsoft's VR devices, uh, they're going to have to get multi-view rendering working at some point in time because that is generally how VR is ultimately rendered. Um, and SDFGI, um, sign distance field, global illumination, I believe is the acronym, too many acronyms in game development, glitches out on AMD GPUs, and there is no support for the MingW compiler. So far, it will only build with Visual Studio, and I wouldn't be surprised that that actually stays the same, because there is a lot of compiler-specific stuff. Let's put it this way. When Microsoft developed Visual, uh, when they developed DirectX, it was intended coupled with their compiler suite. Their tools all work together, so I get how that would work. Uh, if you're interested in getting and compiling it, the details are available right here. It's it's pretty straightforward. You are going to need some uh, resources from the DirectX toolkit to make things work, but uh, pretty straightforward stuff. And some of the details about the future. Uh, right now, there are some minor differences between the way that Vulkan and DirectX do some rendering. So those are being worked out, but it sounds like they've mostly handled it. Um, and there's going to be some other details here. There, there is a ton of detail about the actual port itself right here. Uh, it is also uh, heavily commented throughout. So as they said earlier on, to, to keep the amount of this readme out, you can see right up here, Direct3D shows up as another renderer once you've done this stuff uh, inside of um, the Godot game engine, Godot 4. By the way, this is all for Godot 4. I saw nothing about this being backported to Godot 3, uh, and I doubt it will be, to be honest. But I've said that many times, and then it seems like just about everything is ultimately being backported to uh, Godot 3.x, so maybe, but I doubt it. I imagine this is a Godot 4 only feature, uh, but definitely an interesting development. So this, again, is the first fruits of the labor of W4 games being formed. Uh, and considering that was on August, the, I think it was actually August the 9th, they announced the formation. Uh, this is a pretty quick turnaround. So if you're interested in learning more about W4 Games, uh, their website is available at w4games.com. The details of the actual announcement are available here in their news section. Also, they have kind of a breakdown of why they created the company and so on. Uh, if you're interested in a bit more of the details about it, you might want to check out the FAQ. They kind of go through like how this is going to affect the future of the Godot game engine, why you shouldn't be worried, what kind of stuff they are going to be working on but this is a perfect example of the kind of stuff they are going to be working on and hopefully uh, we get to see uh, more of this kind of stuff in the future so now that you've seen this and this is the kind of stuff that w4 games is ultimately working on are you a little bit less concerned or are you kind of hating the fact that they're supporting a proprietary microsoft rendering system uh, let me know which one it is in the comments down below and ladies and gentlemen i will talk to you all later goodbye